All right, so I just went on a little trip over the Memorial Day break and uh, went to see my family in Central California, and I brought along my Sigma SD Quattro H so that I could take some pictures just to show you how I do my post-processing. These are not like highly meritable, um, that's not a word, M not images of great merit by any means, but I just wanted to grab um, a handful of pictures to be able to walk you through my process uh, and show you my post process. All right, so here we go. I, I catalog everything in months, so I'll do the year, the month, and then in here I'll have my different folders set up. So raw is actually really more accurately a capture folder because I put raw files and JPEGs in here. Just basically dump anything off of the card in here. In this particular process, I dump my JPEGs into the raw folder. Then, and this is best practices, guys, I don't do this all the time or even most of the time. I'll take the JPEGs, I'll put them into Lightroom. I will, you know, make selects in Lightroom and then match the file names to the X3F files off the computer. And then I'll move those X3F files based on the selected JPEGs into a selects folder. So this then gives me a selects folder to work off of. Oh boy, this is more than I thought I had in here. Sorry guys. I thought I narrowed this down significantly, but we'll see when we launch Sigma Photo Pro. Um, but that way I just, anything that I'm looking at in Sigma Photo Pro will be from that selects file because Sigma Photo Pro is slow. So that's just kind of how I like to set it up so that I'm not looking through um, unnecessary images. That being said, this is best practices. I hardly ever work this way, to be honest. I will just dump all the X3Fs and just open up Sigma Photo Pro and look at thumbnails this size and make determinations on which image I want to process. You can adjust the size here and like, you know, this is the max, but like if you full screen that, you get a pretty good sense of what you've got there. It is a little pixelated, it's not like fully rendered. I'm not going to go into the whole, you know, how to set up your preferences, just what kind of preview file you're gonna get and all that. I'm gonna link in the show notes below, like absolutely essential reading and watching if you want to work in this software, because uh, they do a much more thorough job of getting into the software. And everything I've learned was through first going through the series of videos and then getting in here and just experimenting to bits, okay? So this is my process. So once I'm in here, I will open up uh, a photo. So we'll do all of these and I'm gonna try to move relatively quickly just so that I don't bore you to bits, but also because it actually is pretty easy. It's the software itself that takes time. And so for this first like two images, I will render this out as timed in real time. But then from there on, I will jump around in this edit just to speed things up. So I just double click on this shot here and this launches the editor window. Um, sometimes you'll see these little like things pop out like this, and then you know you can minimize it or exit out if you don't ever use it. I just keep them in here. I like to have access to all my controls at all times. And um, this is kind of, this is how I work. So just to go through a few baseline settings. So this is actually on custom right now, which let's just keep it at X3F. So this would reflect how you shot it in camera. Okay. X3F is going to reflect your settings in camera. So I shot this in standard color mode. Um, apparently I have a, a little bit of a bump down on my contrast in camera and a bump up on sharpness for my JPEGs. I don't even remember that to be honest, but apparently I do. Okay. And then from here, what you will see is this detail slider. So this is all about, you know, detail, but think of that as a number of things like clarity, contrast, sharpness, all of that is enhanced or decreased over here. So if you go extra crispy, it's going to give you like, I mean, it's actually insane how much detail you can get out of this, uh, these files. But just to give you an example, this is like pretty crispy. 
and then this is smooth. I tend to work in this smooth area because you still get a lot of definition, but it just renders the sort of highlight roll off and the roll to black a little bit softer. And to my eye, that's a bit more filmic, but there are circumstances, particularly for landscape where I like to go midline, but I very rarely go above the central setting. I will do it here just to give some samples, but that's where I like to live. Then exposure, contrast, shadow, highlight, all of this is pretty intuitive, um, just like any other editor. And then fill light. So this says fill light affects tone correction by adding light energy into the shadow regions without overexposing highlight regions, which I think is a really cute way of saying essentially like it lifts your midtones, but it does actually also lift your shadows and decrease your highlights. So it kind of just levels everything out. And I don't know what crazy algorithm they use to do this, but it is really wild um, what it does. Uh, there's that light energy for you, as they say, but it is really, I use this a lot. That being said, don't be overly ambitious with this slider. I never pretty much go above 0.4. And you'll see as we work through these images why it can get like crazy funky if you go this far with it. People like to do it, it's just not to my taste. Then down here you have your white balance, auto, lighting source priority, and then all your standards. I never change this. I do all of my color correction in the color adjustments wheel, which I will get into a little bit more. Then you have your color modes. You have standard, vivid, neutral portrait. This is all reflected from the settings in the camera and you can change this. So like a lot of people like teal and orange. It's a little intense for my taste. I don't, you know, but you can, you can diminish it. So like, I don't play with these a lot and I, I probably should, but my workflow is super simple. But this is, you know, effectively something that color tones or color grades your images um, based on the setting. I almost exclusively work in standard as my baseline, which, you know, may not be very practical because what I'm doing is often going for kind of a slightly teal and orange in Lightroom after I finish this file in Sigma Photo Pro. But uh, I just haven't explored that much because I've just found what I like. I do use Vivid from time to time. Uh, it just gives it a bit more punch. It definitely crunches the blacks as well, which I do like, but I, I tend to do my blacks in Lightroom. And then Neutral or Portrait are both more flat profiles. I know a lot of people online say they will go with either the Portrait or Neutral on their baseline X3F, just export this as a TIFF and then work the rest up in Photoshop or Lightroom. I actually try to get as close to the final product in Sigma Photo Pro and then just put the final touches on in Lightroom. So there are circumstances where I'll use portrait, but it's pretty much always portrait or standard for me. Then moving down here, you have just like this tone curve. It is not quite like Lightroom's tone curve, it's much more subtle. So shadows, like this is all the shadow all the way down or all the way up. It, um, it definitely has an effect, but it's much more subtle. The light is much more dramatic. This is not something I mess with too much. I just do a very light touch on highlights because I expose to the right as I kind of covered in my last video about the SDQ. H and after uh, sort of moving all of my tones up to this upper end of the histogram, just making sure I don't clip, then it's all about just managing my highlights a little bit um, and creating as much roll off as I can. And then over here you have highlight control, neutralize and restore. To be totally honest, I never touch this. I don't even really know what it does. Um, okay, so it like, I guess takes the highest highlight area and just turns it to white, but I just don't touch it. Then chroma and luma noise reduction. I just pretty much put this down here at all times. I never introduce that any more than I need to. And then there are times where I'll see chromatic aberration and I'll just select these items like as needed, but I don't do a lot with this. I will even correct chromatic aberration in Lightroom. So 
Here is what I would do as my baseline to any given image. And it is very simple. So I'll leave my contrast at zero. I'll usually bring my highlights all the way down. I will bring my sharpness down to negative one. I will bring my fill light up to about negative two or three, sometimes four uh, in this case here. And then I will usually just boost my exposure a touch. And then I will come down here. I'm going to keep this on standard. And then I just, I almost always have my color. I find this camera renders just a little blue. And so I'll go like 3.5 on Amber and 1.5 on magenta, just to sort of warm it up a little bit. And this is it. That's it. That is my baseline setting. I will then take this here. I will go original size. You can do a number of things here. You can half size this, you can double size this, you can super high res this. I leave it at original uh, and I keep my JPEG quality. You know, I never even really thought about this because I don't do JPEG. I go to 16 bit TIFF. And then I export this to that folder you saw here where it's exports. Um, oh no, sorry. I actually put these in raw because then I take these into Lightroom and then the result from Lightroom ends up in exports. So that's what I do. So I put that in here, export. Okay. And here we go. Process and saving. If you watch those videos about preferences, you can see, and I think by default it does this, that as you shoot, um, I'm sorry, as you shoot, as you process, once you now go to the next image, it will carry over. Yes. I like to save these changes to the raw file, essentially just like change the exif data. Now, if I come to this next image and I click custom as it's loading, it will just carry over the last images settings. So, that's really nice and handy. But the other thing you can do, which I do is save settings. And then I will give this a name like video. But as you can see, I kind of already have this here. So I'm going to delete this. And just after going to custom, I can pull up my baseline settings, which is just what we went over right now. Okay, so this is my baseline setting. Oh, I forgot to say, I do actually bring just in my baseline, I have this highlight down by negative three. So this is a good starting point for literally any image for the most part, not always, but for the most part. And the SDHQ, or sorry, my Sigma DP, <laughs> God, my Sigma SD Quattro H is shooting an auto white balance. And I have this white balance setting to auto and it does a great job. It's funny because I find white balance on Sigma cameras generally tends to be my most challenging element to deal with, but uh, this camera actually gets it right pretty solidly. But like I said, I just warm it up a little bit and bring this magenta in. Okay, so we're back in here. I just realized this is um, on the baseline detail. So I do mess with this kind of on the upfront. So this is people, this is family lifestyle. I don't actually want it all the way down to smooth. I think I'll come somewhere in the middle here. Like I like this. Um, and then, you know, the roll off is looking pretty good to me here. So I don't think there's much else that I would do. I mean, maybe I'd bring this down just a touch and I might even bring the contrast down just a little bit to even it out. And then this, that's it. Nothing else is touched. You'll see all of these images are actually three, two as well. This was an accident. I was, uh, for my last review, I set it to three, two to show, um, what the 18 to 35 APS-C lens looks like on the APS-H sensor. And as you can see it, it works pretty darn well. Um, I'm going to close this so you can see, oh, I, I was going to click that. Don't click again, but this one, this one's wide all the way at 18 and you can definitely see um, you know, this vignetting here, but you'll, um, you'll notice when we bring this into Lightroom, I can correct a lot of that. And then I might just slightly pinch back. Uh, don't ask again. Thank you. Um, I'll just slightly crop it just to eliminate any residual there. Okay. Oh, what happened here? This, 
ended up in the selects file. So that's funny. All right, well, we'll, we'll move that after the fact. Okay. So going to this one, I wanted to get just like I said, a handful of different types of images. So here we are indoors. I tend to think of this camera as my outdoor camera, but I am shooting it more and more inside and really trying to um, find the right circumstances for it. But you can definitely use it inside. I do keep it at ISO 100 at all times. Um, but with these 1.8 lenses, it's actually relatively easy to manage. Uh, with this guy, this is actually a circumstance where you might want to look at portraits. So let's just see what that does. Just flattens it out a little bit. I don't love the way the portrait mode actions, which is ironic because it's supposed to be for skin tones, but I don't actually like the way that it renders the skin tones that much. So I'm going to come back on my fill light. It just looks a little pinky, um, a little too chalky. I don't know. I can't really define it. Um, but I would actually bring this back to standard and if anything, maybe we just reduce some of these levels a little bit, go up on my exposure, go up on my fill light and I'm down on my highlights already. So I might just bring this down a little bit more and just flatten it out a little bit. It's kind of almost like if you ever work with video files, I'm not trying to get a log look at all, but I just want to make sure this is going to the right place. No, not selects. We want to go to, um, raw. There we go. Okay. There we go. So just trying to get a slightly flatter image that I can be a bit more malleable with in Lightroom when I move this over. And, uh, sometimes when I'm loading a new image, I just like to see where the last one was as applied to this. So this is how it looked if I were to apply what we just did, and this will have portraits still on it. It's fine, but it's not actually what I would want to work with. So I'm going to go to the baseline again. It gives me a little bit more punch. That standard mode is always going to be a little bit punchier, which I like. Then I'm actually going to go up on the fill light down on the exposure and uh, let's see a little bit more and then up on the fill light one more. This is looking pretty good to me. I think I would probably just stay here. I might look at just coming down a slight touch on this highlight down here. As you can see, it doesn't do a ton. It's very subtle. Let me go all the way so we can just see it. And I mean, that does an amazing job of recovering this, but it's actually too much to my eye. Um, it doesn't look natural to me. So I will go up a little bit on here and then I actually will come up here and go up a little bit on here as well, just to get a little boost in the highs to mids. And I'm just going to see what this, I mean, I never go this high on fill, but I actually think in this circumstance, it might work. And then I might come down on my contrast by two, one, and that's it. Let's use this as our baseline. But I mean, for a camera that I actually don't even think of as a high dynamic range camera, this is pretty good recovery here. Okay. So now we have a detail shot. This is going to pull the last settings and it's going to look wacky. I'm pretty sure. I mean, it actually doesn't even look that bad. Um, that looks really nice. I am not going to lie that that is totally workable to me. All right. I'm going to pull the exposure down. I'm going to pull the fill light down. One of the cool things with fill light is if you really just want a punchier, like how would I describe that? Just, yeah, I guess a punchier image. If you actually go negative with fill light, look at how much that changes the look of the image. It just takes all the dark uh, areas and just brings them down universally in a way that contrast doesn't. Again, fill light is just its own kind of little magical formula. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. I actually liked it a little bit more balanced. I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit, maybe this up, uh, contrast back up, and then the highlights back down. And let's see what else I want to do here. I think this is a good case for maybe going vivid. 
Yeah, now we're talking. I like this. This is just a simple, this is guys where Sigma just kills it. Like, look at these greens. I mean, that just looks so freaking natural and real. And this is actually how it looked to my eye. The color reproduction is just sick. All right, so this is gonna be a tricky one, I can tell, and that's why I chose it. I wanted to challenge myself, and this is honestly one of the things I love the most about this camera. It is, as I have said in my previous video, the closest thing to shooting film for me because I don't know what I'm gonna get. Like, that's the joy of film is you get home with your roll, you get it processed, and you're like, what am I working with here? And that's kind of how I feel about this camera. Like I love how surprised I am sometimes by these files. And sometimes it's not for the best. I'm like, oh shoot, I can't really, this is not how I really wanted it to look. But you can almost always manipulate it to be how you want it. So in this high contrast circumstance with this particular setting and my little one, I'm gonna go smooth here. Just lighten this all up a little bit. Um, I think I would stick here on the exposure that looks pretty good to me the highlights are already down here um, I'm wondering if I would mess with this contrast at all maybe just lightly um, but not too much I don't want like milky blacks I'm gonna go up on the exposure I'm gonna go up on the fill and this is probably where I would land uh, let's see if there's anything else here maybe just a little bit on the highlight there no, I'll just leave it at three. And then I'm gonna export this. And you can see I'm not even really touching my color adjustment at all in these. Um, it's pretty consistent and it's working pretty well for me. Okay, another challenging one because in the JPEG, this all looked blown out. So I was curious to see what we could do to recover it. And like already just right out of the gate using the last set of uh, adjustments, this, this is banging. Um, <laughs> I'm going to just keep it like this. I, I really don't think there's anything I would do. You can come over here and just check your histogram really fast. So this is nice. I do, you can like drag it in here and now it's going to show up. Uh, and we are pretty much right at the edge here. You can like choose how you see your warnings and then you show warnings here. So I can see that this is clipping here. So Maybe we just bring this exposure back a little bit to see how this all nets out. I'm gonna bring my fill light up a little bit and then I'm going to hide these clippings and whilst this preserves my whites, um, here, let me do this. I'm gonna go show those warnings again and I'm gonna bring my highlights up one step at a time because I don't mind a little bit of clipping and I'm missing a little bit of mid-tone brightness. So I'll just keep those clips um, showing and then I'm just gonna bring these highlights back and see where we land. Like this, this, this works um, for my mid-tones. So now this, this is the image we'll bring into Lightroom. All right, this was shot through a window driving at whatever, 70, 80 miles an hour. So um, it was shot at a high uh, shutter speed, 640. Uh, and I know that the color's probably gonna be off no matter what I do here if I try to balance it to like my baseline because of the fact that it was shot through a pane of glass that has a green tint to it as well. So this might be an interesting time to switch to monochrome and talk about monochrome in this camera. So it's a Foveon sensor, and that means that it is reading color information very differently than uh, any other type of sensor would. And it's very much, it's very close to a monochrome camera and you can actually really do incredible black and white work with this camera. And one of the things that a lot of people will tell you is to mess with the channel mixer or the color mixer here. So let's start by um, doing kind of some of the other things that I would naturally do anyway. So I'm gonna go up on my exposure three. I'm gonna come down on my highlights um, all the way. I'm gonna come down on my sharpness to one, negative one. 
I'm going to come up on my fill light by a few. Uh, and then, and actually, you know, it's funny in this case, I actually might want negative fill. Nah, just zero. And then on my highlights, maybe I'll come down a little bit, but actually this is one of those images that is pretty, the lighting was pretty flat. So you don't even need that. And I may not even need like all this highlight recovery here. I might just bring this up and then the channel mixer is where you can start to have a lot of fun. So if you pull it all the way down here to these blues, just look at how this area was affected versus say up here, this area is affected. I like some of these elements kind of popping and for black and white portraits, I tend to prefer to stay in the red orange zone. And then for landscape, I do often live in this like blue zone, but in this particular scenario, let's play and see what's looking good. I mean, it's all very subtle and this is not a great image to really work with, but I think I am going to have it just like give a few elements more pop here. I think I will come up on my image exposure. I'm going to go up on the fill light by one. I don't know if I want that fill light there. I think I might actually just bring my highlights all the way up and I mean, I might, this is one where maybe I'll just try it to go one over on the detail just for fun. Cause I never do. And we'll export it this way. And my black and whites, there's really not much, if anything that I would do outside of Sigma photo pro. This is not something that I will then further tweak in Lightroom. Maybe I'll add a frame to it or something like that, but you know, that's about the extent of it. I mean, you know, shot from a fast moving car through a pane of glass. That, that's pretty awesome. Okay, going to the next one. All right, so this was shot coming up on sunset, like the light's definitely getting lower. Um, and this just as is, I do not like this. Let's go to the baseline, see how that looks. This is much better already. This one, I actually think could use a bit more warmth. Um, so I'm going to just move this over a little bit. That looks good to me. This color adjustment, you know, triangulation, what or not triangulation, but this, this, whatever matrix, um, is super sensitive. So you just, you know, you want to be very subtle and very small with your adjustments on this. I'm liking this. I think I would just keep it like this. I'm curious to try something after I export this. I do actually want to look at this in teal and orange because I just haven't even explored that and it didn't even dawn on me to try it until we started chatting through this processing stuff. But like if I went really subtle on the teal and orange, cause that is oftentimes what I'm doing in Lightroom is just adjusting my hue saturation, my HSL. Um, but no, I would stick to the way I do it. I prefer it, um, in standard and then just tweaking it in Lightroom. All right. So this is in the greenhouse. Um, the kiddos were so psyched to be picking some fresh veg outside in the garden. All right. So this one, let's go to our baseline and you see that when it carries over settings, it does also carry over the aspect ratio. So I don't remember what I shot this in, but I don't think it was three, two. I think I had switched my aspect ratio by this point. So I can go down here to original and see how I shot this. And that's what I thought. Okay. 21 nine is how I originally captured this. And that seems more my style. Uh, I think on this, I'm just going to pop down to smooth, even that out a little bit. And honestly, that's probably all, maybe I'm just going to bring this contrast down a little bit bring this fill light up one, bring this exposure up two, and call it a day. So the other thing about aspect ratio is you can't come in here and crop as far as I know, please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, cause I would love to be wrong about this, but you cannot actually crop 
in this program. So if you, in this, in this case, right, like my, this is not straight, or at least there's something happening with the perspective that is not making it appear straight. So I might in this case actually go to the full sensor readout of three, two, and then export this so that I have the maximum to work with in cropping it to 29, 21, nine in Lightroom. Um, so that's another way to go about it. It's just something to know as well about the program. I have yet to figure out how I could possibly crop it to the exact. So basically it's, it's how you visualize it. If you're shooting in, for example, six, seven, it will reflect it as you shot it here. Um, if you're in the original, so here's original and this is how I shot it and that's how I visualized it. Right. So that's great that it's, it's capturing it the way I shot it, but then I can't adjust it here. So again, you'd want to go back to the original. Uh, full aspect ratio of three, two, to be able to resize that in Lightroom if you wanted maximum flexibility there. All right. So let's do this. I actually, you know, uh, well, I kind of already did that. So never mind. I'm going to go to the baseline. The baseline is just showing it at three, two. So that's baked in and that's kind of my bad. I didn't mean to do that, but I would keep it here. I'm going to go down to smooth again. I'm going to do a lot of kind of what I just did in the other one, except I'm actually going to go negative fill light on this and see what that looks like just to give it a little more mood. And then I'm going to bring up my highlights here. I'm going to center my highlights, bring down my fill light to make that even more dramatic. And then I don't think I'd do that now. Bring this exposure down. And I think this is good. This will make a nice baseline. And this is not, I would want to adjust the straightening here, but I think I have enough to work with to do this in Lightroom without having to, um, like go to the full, full image. All right. So here is a good example of like, you can see how these whites are starting to clip. Let's check out what this highlight control does, this neutralize thing, because I actually don't use that. I don't see a difference, but I'm sure it's doing something. I'm going to leave it at restore. I am going to do the reverse of what I just did now. So I'm going to bring this all the way down to zero exposure. I am going to go up on my fill light. And you see how much this recovers here as well as in the sky. It's just a killer, I don't know, again, voodoo magic. Um, I love it, but yeah, this is great. I'm just going to leave this as is. All right. We're getting closer guys. <laughs> we are at 27 of 34 at this point. So thanks for hanging in there with me. Hopefully this is helpful and useful. Um, okay. I mean like this is pretty great. I'm actually really liking this already. Uh, I might bring my highlights down a little bit and I don't think there's much else I would do. Like it's funny. He almost looks lit, you know, like by a reflector or something. Um, maybe bring this down a little bit and that's it. All right. I threw this one in here just as a particular F you to myself, honestly, just to see what it would do. This is not a shot I would normally ever try to process. Cause I could just tell even while shooting it, I was like, I'm going to shoot this to make it really hard on myself, but I wanted to see what's possible here. So let's take a look. Um, I'm actually going to lean on the fill here. But I see, I don't like it when it comes up too much because it does make things a little milky um, and just not that pleasing. So I'm going to bring my highlight all the way down, bring my exposure up. And one of the things I do do in these circumstances is like it's not natural for the highlight to be totally retained. So sometimes I will actually like boost my highlight um, and then let's reduce the fill light a little bit. And this is probably like much more accurate to how the eye would see. 
and you will see this flaring. Um, I, I mentioned this in a previous video too. The sigmas flare with this green halo cast, which is kind of interesting. Um, definitely doesn't look like film when you see that, um, but it's kind of cool. And then this is a case where I'd probably go, okay, what does it look like in monochrome? And this could be really fun. So I'm going to just immediately bring it um, to this red tone to sort of see how this treats everything. I'm going to bring my exposure in a big jump up to, let's say, I mean, this is actually, I think I'm going to like this, um, two now down from here, then like one, two, maybe just one. And then highlight. I mean, I actually might go up on my highlight here. Let's just look at it. And I'm going to bring this all the way up. Yep. And like, that's pretty nice. Like I'm pretty happy with that. I'm curious to see what happens if we bring this highlight down, just like as just, again, I'm just checking out of curiosity, but you can actually do a lot of really impressive recovery here. Like I didn't expect that to, I thought there wouldn't be any information here, but there is. Now we are maxed out on our um, exposure here. So that's one thing that I think is really interesting about the software is it is definitely a little bit, um, I don't know. I feel like you can go further in Lightroom, but then you can also then take this into Lightroom and do further adjustments. So I am going to do that. I'm going to export this as is. I do not put my film on my film grain on in here. Like this is cray cray. That being said, like there's something interesting in that they do have I mean, they're clearly working on something here and I just haven't played with it enough to um, really make a comment about it. I just don't do this here. I leave the film grain off and I do add film grain, but I do it in Lightroom. All right, there's no reason I put this in here. I just thought it was cute. Um, it's not a great image at all, but again, it's goats. How can you say no to goats? All right, so this is the baseline just with the crop, the, uh, the aspect ratio that I shot it in, which was seven, six. And in terms of what I would do here, I'm curious to see what this looks like if I come down. Yeah, I thought that might fly. So I am gonna come up on this, but not too much. I think I'd probably just leave it at this point here. And one of the things I definitely can see I would like to do is warm it up a little bit. And we're kind of getting into a place that I'd probably leave it at for the sake of a little final Lightroom tweak. Is there anything else I would do here? Sometimes I have to sit and ask myself that. And the answer is probably no. Um, I might just try, let me just see what this looks like when I bring the highlights down here. It's, it's okay. It's not bad. I think I'll come up a little bit. There we go. All right. Then I'm going to export that. So, I mean, as much as I want to take credit for being like a post-production Svengali that I was made out to be on Instagram posting some of these photos, it's really simple. Um, it's almost embarrassingly simple. So, yeah. It's not me. Um, I do love sitting here and processing this stuff and that might drive someone nuts, which I absolutely would understand, but um, I'm not doing anything particularly special here. Okay, baseline. I am again seeing that it's going to that three, two crop, which I don't want. So I'm gonna to go to original, which I know is seven, six. And I can tell this is going to play, be a place where I want smooth. Um, I'm going to want more exposure. I'm going to actually bring my fill light down because I want this to be moody and just bring this up. I actually think I'll bring my highlights up a little bit. Yep. And then I think I'll bring these highlights up and then see what it's like if I just bring some of this down just to kind of smooth it out. And then this is definitely 
Give me some warmth. Give me some love. Yeah, that's looking good. All right, so we'll use this again. I'm going to um, take this to Lightroom and do a final touch, but I think this is a pretty good working, working file. This is the end of the night, putting the goats away into their shed. And this is just carrying over the same um, settings from the last image, and I ain't going to change a thing. We're getting so close now, guys. This was just something that I saw by the goats, and I was like, that's just interesting, kind of cool. Um, vertebra from some creature who, you know, was probably, I don't know. It's the country. These things happen. Uh, this is a fill light area where I might come down just to like, again, create a bit more mood. And I would bring my highlights up here just to create that contrast. And you know, this could be really interesting just like as a softer image. Um, I, I mean, like, okay, I wish, you know what, maybe I can. They're probably, guys, this is a program I use a lot, but I don't even know how to use it really. Like, I'm sure there's a before and after here. All right, well, if you know how to do that, let me know in the comments. I'm sure there is a before and after option here, but... Um, if I were to go to where we started, maybe that is the X, like that's the before. This is the after. Come on. Like that's crazy. I love it. Uh, actually, as we've softened this up, now I do want a little more detail in there just to like make it real, real interesting. All right, let's land there. And again, like I said, I will come in and finalize this in Lightroom, but really it doesn't need it. Like this looks great to me just right out of Sigma Photo Pro. Um, so this is interesting because this is, let's see, I'm usually at 351115. This is carrying over some of those settings from the last shot and like just, I think just look at these highlights, the way they're blowing, I think is really interesting. Like I find that appealing because it doesn't feel like a harsh clipping. It does feel like a rolling clip. That being said, um, for the sake of this video, I'll show you how I would save out a couple of different versions so we could look at them in post. So I'm going to save it this way. Just save it out like that. And then I'm going to go back to our baseline and try a different edit and export that as well so we can look at them both in Lightroom and make a decision there. So we're gonna go to the baseline and that looks crazy. Um, okay, first let's go to our original crop. And this definitely is much harder than I would want for anything to do with people or skin or in like a lifestyle, environmental, that kind of thing. So I have my highlights down here. It's recovering nicely here. I'm curious to see what happens when we bring this all the way down. So we are recovering more here. I'm going to bring my exposure down. And then I'm going to bring my fill. Oh, I'm, we're already up on the fill. So that's, I'm not going to do much more of that actually. Um, what I could do is bring my contrast down and that's too far. So let's bring this back. I think more like in the five range, three range. Um, I don't, as you can probably see, I don't mess with the shadow that much, but like in this circumstance, it could work. Um, and more exposure and then, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty good, again, another way of approaching this image. 
I actually think I prefer the previous one, but let's, let's take a look at this, um, in post or in Lightroom. So we're going to save this out. And the way I would save this, if I do this again, it's going to ask me to overwrite it. No, I don't want to overwrite the other one because then I don't have anything to compare it to. So I'm going to do this again as just a dash one in the file name so that I have two versions in my raw folder to pull into Lightroom. Um, custom, it's going to pull in the last round of settings. I mean, that looks really good to me, actually. I Okay, we're going to save one version like this. Then we're going to do one other version. I'm going to go back to the baseline. Actually, let's just keep it here, but then just shift it to a portrait color mode to see what that does. So it just lifts everything. It's much flatter, but I'm curious to see what happens in uh, Lightroom when we take that and adjust it a little bit. So let's look at that. Okay, you guys, we're done with Sigma Photo Pro, but we still have Lightroom to get to, so it goes really fast um, because I have one simple trick that I do. So closing this out, now let's go to Lightroom. All right. And there's a guy online who has an amazing blog. It's all in German. And when I went into the black hole of Sigma obsession, I read every one of his uh, blog posts that I could. It was all in German. I auto translated it and just went really deep. And he when he started to shoot with the Sigma DP2 Quattro, he was the one who suggested that um, you do a couple of things in develop in Lightroom with, his, he was shooting DNG files. So he was adding like 22 bumps of contrast. Um, he was doing things like changing the HSL with the red and the orange and the greens and the yellows. Didn't really touch much else. But anyway, I used basically his very, very simple, uh, premise, which I will find the article and link it out here. It was only like tweaking a very, very small handful of things. And I used that as like my starting point and then created, um, I went in and refined it to my taste. So I went in and started working on all the, all the colors HSL. I did a very, very light color grade and that was it. Um, it was really pretty straightforward. I don't have the settings here because what I did was I actually set that as a preset. So I have it here saved under user and I just saved this preset. And what I like about that is then I can kind of dial it in, dial it back. I like it usually at like a 57 to 65 mark. Sometimes it's full strength, but a lot of the times I'll bring it down a little bit. And then in this case, like this, I think I would just want some, um, you know, correction here and that would be it. And this is what I would call done. So then I export this specific folder. Okay. So choose. And then in here I export to here, choose export. And then I just keep going through. So here is another shot. I'm just going to apply the profile. I'm going to bring it down a touch. And this is an interesting one because I think I probably was a little too hot when I came out of Sigma Photo Pro and I would like to lower this a little bit. Um, and that, that would be it. And that would be my export. Uh, and here, I'll just do it again. So this is one thing I definitely have noticed is it gets kind of pinky. Um, the oranges, I mentioned this in my camera review of the Sigma Quattro. Um, these pinks and reds and oranges kind of can get kind of funky. So I definitely bring this down in those cases and it just makes it a little bit, you know, less dramatic. And then I'll just before and after so you can see it's subtle but it just gives it this like a little bit more warmth, a little bit more vibe overall. And then I don't think this is going to correct well, but oh yeah, that worked. Okay. 
And then, you know, if I really wanted to spend time here and, you know, this is a, a case where I might just tweak it ever so slightly here and there just to give it a little less of that pinky vibe and, you know, things like HSL, I could come in here. I don't even know like where to read off, but maybe like here, wait, did this change you guys? I can't keep up with these changes that they always happen. Um, I'm used to seeing my dropper here, but I don't see it, which is a bummer. But anyway, okay, so um, this I'd probably move away from the pinks. I'd probably move this a little bit this way. And then, like this is too much, but five. This is where you start to get really tweaky though, like the before and after that. You can see it, but it is mad subtle. Um, so again, this is where you would get like, that's if you really want to get tweaky. Um, but for a general approach, this is all I do. Apply the preset, dial it back a little bit and call it a day. So just to show you, I'm going to now take this and apply it across everything else so we don't have to sit here all night and then we can just take a quick breeze through and let's see let's go full frame and before and after oh no I can't before and after here but so you see it's very subtle and I actually with this particular one I think I just like the raw file the best This one, I actually see this, I might bring that um, preset up a little bit, bring this uh, exposure down and maybe flatten out that contrast a little bit. And that's it. This before, after. This I wanna go full strength. Mm, not full strength, but close, 66. Uh, this obviously is not one I would do anything like that too, although it's kind of interesting, right? You can kind of, <laughs> but yeah, this uh, black and white, I would just go, this actually could be really interesting with a little dehaze. So it's just, it's just light, right? It just gives it a little bit more, um, a little more vibrancy, a little more pop, a little more mid-tone, a little more saturation. Like in here, this one I might even bring down further. And sometimes I'd argue you don't even need it. Like this is a case where I don't even know you need it. Because we couldn't go up any higher in Sigma Photo Pro, you can here, bring down these blacks, bring up this dehaze a little bit, and that's a mood. But again, I am a fan of just straight out of Figma, Sigma Photo Pro on that one. And this guy, so, I mean, all of this is just to say it's a real simple process and there is a little legwork that was done in advance, but, um, overall this is really straightforward and I am going to leave this preset or this profile in the show notes here for anyone who wants to use it because I freaking love this camera and it's I, I just, I say that with such reluctance because I know it's not for everyone, but it's really right for me. 
And I just love just playing with these files. I just love everything about it. Um, so if you want to give this a shot and you have any one of these Quattro sensors, um, feel free and let me know, let me know what, what, where you land with it, like how, how it works for you. I think I am going to bring this down. I love this. <laughs> My daughter cracks me up so much. That was such a fun trip. We had a great time. I kind of do dig how crazy moody this is. I mean, very, very different feel, right? But like, I prefer this actually. I wonder what happens if we just bring this down. Yeah, there's just no info there. And I'm okay with that. I always like a little bit more richness and, um, the, you know, that's why I try to get it right in Sigma photo pro. I don't try to make it as flat as possible where, you know, I could then take this flat file and kind of, you know, bring my blacks down, bring my shadows down or whatever, and give it a little bit more mood. But, um, I like, like doing as much as I possibly can in Sigma photo pro. And there you have it guys. That is it. That is, you know, the whole kit and caboodle. And that is my process with Sigma Photo Pro. Super straightforward, um, not difficult. This profile will be in the description below. Use it, enjoy it, tweak it, make it your own, and tell me all about it because there's not enough information on the internet about these, um, these cameras, in my opinion. And I really, really dug hard. Like I wanted to find people to pick their brains and understand. And all I could do is find this guy in Germany in German and translate his blog post from 2015 or 17 or whatever it was. So please bring me all of your tips, comment below. Um, and let's talk about these cameras because, uh, they have very quickly become my number one faves.